My name is Jennifer Harris and I am the proud library director of the Plymouth Public Library. Today was the day that we have been working on for over a year. Community has come together. We've talked to so many people and asked them to bring their pictures for the Mass Memories Roadshow. Uh, my name is Tom Begley. I am the executive liaison for research and special projects at Plymouth Plantation. And I'm here today um, at the Plymouth Public Library for the Mass Memories Roadshow to share some pictures of Plymouth Plantation's history and its uh, development over time in, in the town of Plymouth. Well, my ties to Plymouth occurred even before I was here on Earth, you know. I was born here at the Jordan Hospital on June 26, 1941. I've lived here ever since. I did go away to college, I went to BU for four years, and then I worked in Boston. Uh, I worked in Europe for a year as a nurse, traveled and came back, got married and lived in the state of New Hampshire and Connecticut, and then by 1970, came back, have been here ever since and probably will die here. <laughs> I'm Cookie Santaboni, and I am a long, my full life Plymouthian. I call myself an endangered species. I was born here in 1943, and I taught kindergarten here for 30 years. Right. My name is Connie Mello Horace. I was born and raised in Plymouth. I've lived here for 73 years, and um, I also worked in Plymouth. I was uh, vice principal at the West Elementary School and I retired in 2003. I'm Mia McMorris. I am a public history track first year grad student at UMass Boston. Um, I just moved here from Jamaica, so really excited to visit Plymouth. Hi, I'm Marielle Gutierrez. I am originally from California and I did also just move here to Massachusetts to go be a part of UMass Boston's uh, Public History Master's Program. And uh, why we decided to join in with this um, project is because we wanted to learn more about the community, uh, practice public history skills, just getting to know people, hearing their stories. Yeah, um, we heard about the Mass Memories Roadshow in one of our classes and we thought it was just a really awesome program and it sounded exciting to be a part of collecting history. I really enjoy living in Plymouth because of its history and also because it's near the ocean and I don't think I'd live anywhere else but here. I am from Plymouth. I've lived here most of my life. Um, and it's really exciting to see so many Plymouthians come out uh, to support this project, to donate their pictures to the Mass Memories Roadshow, um, sharing their memories and what Plymouth means to them. I think that we all have our own stories and reasons why we're here. And to talk with people in the room and see what's uh, gonna be shared online, uh, we'll get a better sense of you know, where Plymouth is today. And so I just wanted to share one of the ones that I used, which of course is the beautiful front lawn of the library. And in particular, we also had the, uh, the, the gardens are maintained by the Plymouth Garden Club. So they had put in some beautiful mums. So I wanted to catch us at this moment with this library. Now other people have brought other pictures of the library when it was first built. We had the um, shovel whatever, ceremony. And then we tried to get some pictures from the old library on North Street. That's just from the library end. We are seeing pictures of local residents who have looked through their photo albums. They're bringing black and white gorgeous pictures. Richard Nixon's in one. I know that we've had um, other celebrities who have come here. There's families, people have taken pictures at the beach. It's been an incredible experience. Uh, so I brought three pictures today from Plymouth Plantation, um, talk, showing the sort of three different aspects of what the museum does. Uh, every day. The first one I brought was of Mayflower II's arrival in Plymouth Harbor in 1957. Um, 25,000 people were on the shores that day. Uh, so it was a, this picture you see all, all the, everyone dotting the landscape. Um, so it was a really exciting day and hopefully everybody comes out for next May 2020 when sh the ship comes home again. Um, I also brought a picture of the 17th century English village where um, you know for since 1959 Plymouth Plantation has been based at the uh, Eel River campus. 
Um, we started in 1947 at the Plymouth Waterfront in Pilgrim Memorial State Park. Um, but by 1959, we actually, the Hornblower family actually donated their family estate to the museum for the purposes of building a full-scale English village. So that's where we've been ever since. Um, and I also shared a picture of the Wampanoag home site, which as we know it today was started in 1973. Um, so it's kind of an older picture of the home site where we tell the stories of the Wampanoag people and, and the indigenous peoples of Southern New England since the 17th century, or before the 17th century and to today. This is my first one. And that would be me going to kindergarten. It was a private kindergarten at the time because there were no kindergartens here in Plymouth. And I went to Miss Bostick's kindergarten. Little did I know that would be my career. So I started my career, as did many people here in Plymouth, at Nathaniel Morton, but it was called Plymouth Junior High and High School. Many years later, I ended up going there when it became an elementary school and I taught kindergarten. Taught kindergarten there, the end of my career, 16 years. This first picture that I'm holding is a picture of the Nathaniel Morton in the background, but the children in the picture are one of my last batches. And you can see Lissa Resnick, who was my teacher aide. So Lissa and myself, and one of my last batches, because I had an AM and a PM class. Here's the second group, my last batch. And if you can see what they're doing, they've got their fingers up and they're doing a cheer called the wow because they thought they were pretty wonderful, as did I. I had many such cheers that I used through the years. One of them, I would put my hands up and have a silent cheer, and they would all laugh because, of course, my bracelets were anything but silent. I was very blessed to teach here in Plymouth. Um, wonderful parents, wonderful children. And then was time for my retirement. And I thought I would be so sad but in fact, I found out there is nothing better than retirement. It doesn't mean that I'm not still part of this community because I am. I've been a town meeting member now for 25 years, very involved in the Plymouth 400, which I think the world of. I absolutely love my town, but there is nothing better than retirement. And this picture happens to be a dozen red roses my husband brought to me the day of my retirement at school and hugged me and kissed me and then said, these are rent a rose, they have to go back at the end of the day. That kind of explains to you what it's been like to be married to Paul Zanaboni all these years, just plain fun. So I'll start with my first photo and it's actually of my sister and myself. I'm the little girl to the right. Okay, I guess it'd be the, I won't say which, I'm the smaller one, okay. I'm like age three and my sister's age five. And why it's significant is when my sister was seven, she was killed. She was struck by a car. Someone threw her hat in the road. She went after it and carried her. So from that time on, you know, I was an only child. So the pictures that I have of my sister are quite precious. And this is a one, I love our eyes in this picture of both of us. They're so clear, you know, and sweet. Her name was Charlotte May Eamon, C-M-O-N-D, and she was born on uh, November 10th, 1938, and died January 10th, 1946. Okay. The next one I have is of my mom, and I love it. I just found this one. It is actually taken at the Sparrow House down in the basement where uh, they, the potters would work. The Sparrow House was bought in the 1930s by Miss Catherine Alden. In fact, the library has a big archival project on her here. And she started the Plymouth Pottery Guild, okay? And so my mother was actually secretary treasurer of the Plymouth Pottery Guild for like 35 years and a friend of Miss Alden and a potter. Now I must admit, my mother did not make the most beautiful of pots. That was not one of her greatest gifts. Uh, she was very creative and all, but I wouldn't say the potter. You know, some people just have a gift. But here she is throwing a pot, as they would say. And I love it because she's young and she's probably in her early 30s. You know. And I, and this picture I chose because of my folks, again, uh, you know, Ferdy and Ruth Eamon going out, probably 1948 or so. And they'd gone to Burt's Restaurant, which is no more. It was by Plymouth Beach. 
and it started out, Burt Booten built it, it was just a little clam shack, and it, then it evolved into a bar and a small restaurant. By the time they're going, it's a, you know, it's a small restaurant, good food, and so I'm sure they were meeting friends, having a few drinks, and going for dinner. And um, I just thought the pictures, their faces are really clear in this picture, that's why I liked it. You know, I have other pictures, but they're further apart, or it's not so clear. So those are the pictures I chose. I think it's this project is important to preserve um, the history of those who have, of us who have lived here uh, for future generations. Um, honestly, all the stories I heard today are so different, diverse. It's just interesting to see what is important to them and how that connects the community. And I think it's just beautiful to see. Uh, <laughs> So I worked for the morning on the scanning station, so I really got to see the images um, and then also hear kind of like the follow-up stories because they got warmed up with Mario and then <laughs> they came and like gave me the full background on the pictures. Um, but they were just so passionate about these images and I think it's exciting that people get this chance to be a part of a Plymouth history that is not just what we hear read about in the history books. We have a broad spectrum of people who live here. I mean, from you know the lifelong residents who've been here all their lives to uh, new people coming in all the time. I mean, we had a big influx of people coming in when the power plant was built. You know, it's by the ocean as history. It just it's our hometown.